Hello students, Miss Slyman here, and we're going to be looking at volumes of revolution about the x or y axis. So we've got this curve 2 minus 2x squared, so of course we know that our, we've got this value up here of 2, down here is 1, if we go from 0 to 1. If I think about the integral of this from 0 to 1, that's going to give me the area under the curve. Well, if I think about that area as like a piece of paper, and then I take that and rotate it about the x-axis. So imagine it coming forward towards us and looping around. So if we think about what that shape's gonna look like, well, I'm not so good at drawing it, so I've gone ahead and put it into GeoGebra. Uh, this one I've done around the y-axis, so let me go ahead and change this to be the x-axis. And when I go about the x-axis, here is my shape. So we started with this, whoops. <laughs> okay, there we go. So we started with our parabola. Here it was. And then let's look at it this way. All right, so here was our parabola. We took it and we rotated it around the x-axis. So the red axis here is the x-axis. And so we end up with this surface. If it was, if we think about taking the area and rotating it, then it would make this solid, not just a surface, it would make a whole solid. So rotating it about the x-axis, then I end up with circular cross sections that would come out this way. And we end up with sort of that dome, sort of sideways dome shape. If I take it about the y-axis, well now my circular base is going to be down here. And I've got this shape that comes down. So if we want to try and visualize it this way, if I come and change my surface, I wonder if I could actually do solid. So if I did y-axis, then now my y-axis is green. So I've rotated it about the y-axis. And so I have this shape that sort of stands up. But all along, I've got circles. If I cut up the y-axis, I would be seeing lots of different circles. So that's what I've drawn down here. So if we think about taking this shape that we rotated around and cutting it into a bunch of cylinders. So in this way, if I take my 0 to 1 range on my x-axis and divide it into nine different intervals, well, each of these would have a width of delta x. And then, of course, if this is my x sub 1, my height here would be y sub 1. So if I think about just one of these cylinders here, again, here's my width, and it would be my delta x. And then coming from the center, I would have my radius. And I would find that as my, goodness, y sub k value if I divide it into k different intervals. So I would have not, sorry, not k different intervals, n intervals, and I numbered them from 1 to n. So this volume, well, this is a cylinder. I know the volume of a cylinder is pi r squared h, so pi. My r is going to be my y value, so y sub k squared. My height is this width here of delta x. And of course, I know that that y can be found using my equation. So I'm just going to slide this up here. So my equation to find y is 2 minus 2. I would plug in x sub k squared, square that whole thing because it's pi r squared, delta x. So in this way, I could take my 0 to 1, divide it up into n intervals, and find my volume by doing the sum from k equals 1 to n of pi r so I'm using k here, x sub k squared, squared to get the r squared, and then multiply it by my delta x. 
And as we've seen, when we take a sum, if we make infinitely many disks and I sum that, well, as my n gets bigger and bigger, this is getting smaller and smaller, and I'll end up with my sum pi r squared dx. So my width is getting smaller and smaller. I'll find my sum and it becomes this integral. So using this integral, I'm gonna find the volume of revolution around the x-axis.